In March of this year, we announced AI Gen and released a few new templates to help you integrate AI into your application. In this video, I'm going to recap our ChatGPT template and showcase a template example. This will serve as helpful context for next week's video showcasing how you can use OpenAI's new API model, Turbo0613, to generate a JSON output that we can use in our Flutterful application by using the new function calling capability. Let's dive right in by cloning our ChatGPT template on our marketplace. I've included the link right below. Let's go ahead and break down this template. First, let's start off by showing you how you can set up your API. So OpenAI has a number of AI models having varying capabilities. The model that we're going to use here is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now we've already set up the chat completion API already by defining our API group and creating a post API call. We've set up a header here and we've defined the JSON body to pass in the model and messages in the correct format. We've also set up the API key as a string and the prompt as a JSON object in order to properly communicate with the API. Since it's been set up, let's go ahead and test our API key. So step one, you'll need to create an OpenAI key on OpenAI's platform. I've already set one up here, but before you do that, also remember that you'll need to set up your payment in order to actually be able to use this API. So don't forget to do that. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and remove this API key that's present in the template and paste in our own. And for the prompt, we have to make sure that we're sending in a JSON format in order to test this response as well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this JSON prompt format and now let's go ahead and click test API call. And there you go. We have a success for calling this chat completion API. But now we have all of the recommended JSON paths that appear here that we can use and select as variables. This template has already selected a few that will review in our template. So let's dive into it. Now, before we call our API within the app, you'll need to set up the UI, which has already been done for you. And also a few variables to store the data because we want to retain the chat GPT responses for each session kind of like a chat history. So we have to set up two variables, which have already been done in the template. The first local page state variable is the input content, which is a string. And the second one is the chat history, which is set up as a JSON object. And we also have two simple custom functions, one for saving to the chat history and the other for converting to the correct message format while sending a prompt. The save chat history function essentially adds a new chat to a JSON list and returns a new chat. This custom function takes two arguments as variables. New chat and chat history are both JSON objects. The convert to JSON literally takes our string prompt provided by our user and turns it into the JSON format that will allow us to communicate with the API, which is why the only argument it takes is a string. So now let's look at what's happening when we actually call our API. So we've set this up on our icon button and the template contains a list of actions that are initiated when the user selects the send button. So what's going on here? So first off, we're updating our chat history page state variable using our save chat history function. Essentially, this will take the first new chat that the user creates and add it to our chat history as the first item. Then action two, we're actually calling our backend using our API key variables and our prompt variables. So for our API key, make sure to actually input your API key whenever you're using this template and before testing. And for our prompt, we're sending in our chat history page state variable, which contains all the information that we've sent so far and our user's input. And the action returned by this backend call is the ChatGPT response. Now, if ChatGPT response has succeeded, then we'll execute a few actions. We'll go ahead and update our widget state variable for chat history once again to add in ChatGPT's response into our chat history, and then we'll clear the text fields. And finally, we'll wait 800 seconds, and then we'll scroll to the bottom of the page. This is going to be helpful, especially if the text response that ChatGPT provides us is extremely massive, and we want our user to be able to view the entire output. And obviously if it's false, nothing happens, there's a wait, and there's a scroll to action. Next, let's talk about how we visualize ChatGPT's responses into this list view. So in order to visualize the responses, we've set our list view to dynamically generate children based on our chat history. And the text fields are essentially set from variable and set from the JSON path for content which, if you remember originally, is how we communicate with the API. 
And lastly, to show the correct chat bubble based on whether the message is from the user or from ChatGPT, we'll use conditional visibility. Now in the template, we've set this on a row and we've set up conditional visibility based on a code expression. This code expression is using the modulus operator, which returns a remainder after one number is divided by another. In this template, we're saying that if the remainder of this index is not zero, then we assume that it is ChatGPT's assistant role. Likewise, we conditionally showcase the user's input only if the modulus remainder is equal to zero, essentially when the index is completely divisible by two. In the blog, we have these conditional visibility set up by checking the role field inside the JSON message, so there's multiple ways to do this. And now let's test it out. Let's see what ChatGPT says. Ah, huh. okay. And it looks like our ChatGPT wrapper is working. So now you can imagine that you can take this template and actually integrate it into whatever application that you'd like to create in Flutterflow. So let me show you an example. Here's a template created by our head of design. It allows you to feed a forms input into ChatGPT directly. This template has two pages. GPT Flow is a themed version of the first template that we discussed, and the start page is a form page. In this form, we can have the users select how they want a marketing plan created and send over the information to ChatGPT to get a response. All we're doing here is combining the text and context that we want ChatGPT to have and the user's input by using Flutterflow's form fields. So on the generate plan button, I'm going to set an action to navigate to GPT flow and pass a parameter of our first message. The first message will take the context we want ChatGPT to have plus our user's input, which we're able to set in Flutterflow. It's important to note here that you can easily change this form to take the input fields that you want your users to submit and change the form to have the context that you want ChatGPT to have as well. Once again, in order to set up this template, you just have to add your own API key that you can get from OpenAI's website. As an example, once we finish inputting the fields on this form, we're able to pass the parameter to ChatGPT's flow page. And as you can see, our first message is a combination of the context we've provided as well as our user's inputs. And now when we click send, we're able to send this information to ChatGPT and we can copy the information if we want to use in other parts of our application. That's it for the template recap. Once again, you can find all of our templates in the marketplace and I'll leave a link down below. Join me next week for part two of this series where we use the latest model, GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613, to generate a JSON output that we can use in our Flutterflow application.